Hello, this is Jana, and welcome to my kitchen. Today we are making a Boston cream pie cake. And so that's, it is a Boston cream pie, it is a cake, but some of you may not know that it's not actually a pie. But it is a yellow cake with a cream filling. This is going to be an easy Boston cream pie. And so I've got one yellow cake mix. I'm going to pop it into my mixer. You can use a hand mixer. One cup of water. Get that mixed on there. And then I've got a room temperature stick of butter. And I need a third of a cup, which is five and a third tablespoons of butter. that inside there. Use my spatula. Get all of that. And then I've got three eggs. And I open them up one at a time. If you ever have a bad egg, doesn't happen very often. But you sure don't want to ruin all of your ingredients over one little cup that you have to dirty. So there's three whole eggs. Just follow your instructions on your box of cake mix, whatever that is, okay? And now we're going to add our little beater here. Pull our bowl up. We're going to mix this real quick. Poof, poof. In just one second here, I'm going to scrape down the sides of the mixer. See how easy this is? <laughs> I do have the long version as well of a Boston cream pie. It's one of my husband's favorite desserts. I don't make dessert very often, as you can probably tell from my recipe collection. But when I do, he sure does enjoy it. We just want to mix this for about a minute. And while that's mixing, I'm going to go over and prepare my pan. There we go. I'm going to spray my pan. Scrape my bowl down again, and then I'm going to add a teaspoon of my vanilla of your choice. I have some Mexican vanilla here. I hear Bailey or Jack wanting to come in the house. It is Jack. Double check, make sure everything is mixed in there. And if you want to do it the real traditional style, you can do this in the round pans, but we're going to use instant pudding to make the filling today because we're doing easy Boston cream pie. All mixed in there. Here we go. I have a 9 by 13 pan, like I said, all ready to go here. Excuse my arm. You hear me breathing. <laughs> it's allergy season, and I'm on the struggle bus this weekend with allergies. They're getting ready to harvest the corn here pretty soon. So everything is starting to do its thing out in the field, I'm getting ready. And here is a little spread it out evenly in the pan. I 
We want to get all that goodness off there. Butter could be in there. Vanilla could be in there. <laughs> Yumminess. Plus, I make cake bigger. There we go. Clean out my pan a little bit. I'm going to grab a paper towel. Always try and keep your pans and plates before serving because that would turn up very brown if it was left on the side. So I'm just going to bake this according to my package directions at 350 degrees. And every type of pan, whether you're using a glass pan, this is ceramic, whether you're using an aluminum pan, all of them have different times to cook. So I'm not going to say how long it is. Use your package directions. It'll take a little less time with convection, all kinds of things. So just use your package directions and bake your cake. You don't want to overbake it and you don't want to underbake it. Just right. We'll be back in just a few minutes. All right, we're back. And while our cake is baking, I can go ahead and start the ganache that's going to go on the top of it because it has to cool down anyway. And so we're kind of doing things out of order, but yet in order. The cake is still baking in the oven. So I've got carnation evaporated milk, not sweet and condensed. This is evaporated. And always shake your evaporated milk really well, even if you're going to use it all, because some stuff sticks to the bottom, apparently, because it always says shake well on the top of the lid. And we'll follow directions. So I've got the church key here. I've got my one-third cup. There we go. Pour this into my pan. And we're going to bring this I'm going to pop some of those bubbles over there because the pan was... What we're going to do is we're going to watch... I know there's bubbles right there. We're going to watch it and it's going to... I'm not going to stir it. I'm not going to do anything. You can start to see the steam coming up. And then we're going to see tiny bubbles form on the edges. I know there are some there, but that's from me pouring it in. And it doesn't take very long. And depending upon your stove... We're going to watch. That's me checking my cake. I always set my temperature for five minutes early so I can make sure. So I'm going to check it. I'm looking pretty close. I think we're getting close here. And it's a good thing that I checked it early because that is done early. I'm going to show you something. When you push the center of the cake, see it spring back up? It's done. All right. Okay, now back to this. See the steam? And there's a little bit, of, I don't know if we can zoom in here. See the little bit of skin that's like wrinkly on the top? that's where you want to be and then you shut off your heat you don't let it come to a boil when you see that that's called scalding and now here I've got chocolate chips it calls for one and a third cups of chocolate chips and I'm going to add one teaspoon of vanilla first and my family loves chocolate but not super super chocolatey and so you can do what your family likes but I used a combination of semi-sweet and milk chocolate chips because that way it's not too sweet now I'm going to go ahead and add these in and I've got, whoopsie, and I've got my whisk here and I'm just going to let them set for about 30 seconds in that milk. I'm not going to do anything. Just let them soak. Let them go to the spa. There. I'm just going to let it do nothing. Just let it set. 
And while I'm letting it set, I've got to get one third of a cup of butter to put in this after I stir it up. So once again, there is the five and a third tablespoons of butter. Just the same as the cake. Easy peasy to remember. And I'm gonna open that up so it'll be ready here. And it's been close to 30 seconds here. We're gonna test it, oh yeah. And I wanted you to be able to see this part because you're gonna get scared that you did something wrong at first because it's gonna come out kind of watery. See how nicely, remember we've got our heat off. We just brought that milk up to a simmer, or not quite a simmer, up till it had the scald on it. But see, as I'm stirring, you're like, oh no, it's too watery. Because you would never do this with powder sugar, <laughs> add that much liquid to it. But there's no powder sugar. This is sweetened, or just, <laughs> I almost said it, evaporated milk and chocolate chip morsels. See, and it's starting to pull together. All those chips are melting. I don't want to add my butter because I don't want to cool this down right now. I'm going to wait till all my chips, and you can kind of tell some of them are melted and some of them are just about melted, but we want to stir the whisk this. I'm going to get out, make sure all the chocolate chips are out of my whisk. There we go. I'm going to whisk, whisk, whisk. until it's nice and smooth and get all those morsels melted. And by the way, the cake is going to cool down until it's, not, instead of hot, that it's just a warm, almost cool. See how smooth it's getting now? All that milk is mixed into those chips. And now is when I want to add my butter. And this is so yummy. And this will be poured over the top of our pudding on top of our cake. See how nice this is? It's beautiful and nice and smooth. Beautiful ganache. Chocolate ganache. Ganache is what's like on top of those when you go to a fancy bakery and they have eclairs, cream puffs, cakes that are shiny with a nice smooth finish. See? It is beautiful. And like I said, if you want to use all semi-sweet chocolate, you go for that. I just added a little bit of the milk chocolate morsels because that'll be more to our family's liking. So I'm going to set this right there. I'm not going to move it. It's fine right where it is and it's going to cool down a little bit. And when we come back with the next part of the cake, super easy again. We'll see you in a minute. Okay, welcome back and we're working on our Boston cream pie cake because <laughs> it is a cake. All right, we have a nine by 13 pan that we, of uh, yellow cake mix that we made. Whatever your yellow cake mix is, you follow the directions for making your cake. There's nothing different that I did, I just follow the directions on my cake. You don't have to use butter, you can use oil, whatever your mix calls for. I have a wooden spoon that has a pretty good size end on it. And I'm gonna go through, and I know most of you have heard of poke cakes before and so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna poke our cake and go all the way down and around and we're gonna pour this pudding inside of these holes my husband likes filled donuts we don't get them hardly ever but when we do he likes things with filling in them and so this cake by the way I can touch the pan the cake is 
is almost cool. It still has a little bit of warmth to it, but it's not hot. Yeah. I'm gonna set this aside for a minute. Get my bowl, and I have four cups of whole milk, but you can use skim milk, 2% milk, whatever you have. So I'm gonna add that. And then I have two packages of French vanilla. That's my preference, but you can use vanilla or French vanilla. I'm gonna add, and this is instant. And then I'm gonna add, because it's just that little more homemade flavor, I'm gonna add a teaspoon of clear vanilla You don't have to add that. It just gives it a little more homemade flavor. I told you this was a very fast, because I love to make, it's actually very easy. We'll do that one day. Um, a bakery cream filling. And so we're gonna just stir this for a second and you're gonna see that it's gonna start to thicken. We don't want it to get all the way thick. It's going to be really close. We're going to whisk it and then it's going to start to thicken. It doesn't take very long. I know I've got it all mixed all the way through. I'm going to grab my spatula just to make sure. Anything dry on the bottom. We want everybody in the pool. I can feel it starting to thicken up. I'm going to give it just a second here. Doesn't take long because we want it to be, we don't want it to be all the way pudding thickness, even though it's going to turn like that, because we want to be able to get it easily down into those holes. See, it's starting to get thicker. We're gonna wait a second. Getting closer. And then this will be a refrigerator cake. You'll have to keep this in your refrigerator. See, it's starting to get there. Because once we go, we're gonna go, go. See, it's getting there. Thicker, thicker. You can start to see the spatula marks in it. Thank you. <laughs> My daughter's a whisk. It is a whisk. <laughs> Aaron is our is our camera person and a lovely assistant. She helps me a lot. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pour this. Get down in those holes. See, it's starting to get thicker. You can hear my grandfather clock in the background reminding me. The days are going by so fast. Too fast, don't they? All right, see, I'm pouring into each of those holes. If you don't have a pour spout bowl, it's okay. You can spoon it in. Getting thicker. We don't want to cheat ourselves out of a bite, do we? We want it to be in every one of those holes. Mm -hmm. 
And we're gonna let this sit up in the refrigerator for just a couple minutes. And as you can see, it doesn't take long. And then we're gonna come back and put our ganache topping on. Go back through, make sure I've got all these holes filled. Looks like it. I'm gonna, before I use all of it, I'm gonna make sure I've got, and see when we wiped our nine by 13 pan off before putting it in the oven, we don't have any, just a little bit right there. So I like it to look nice and clean and neat. And I know I didn't mention this, but I wash my hands a lot. And so whenever you are teaching and training your children to work in the kitchen, that is a must. Cause you know, you go over and grab a refrigerator handle and you don't really think anything of it, but that refrigerator handle can easily potentially make your family sick if something had been on there. So just wash your hands a lot. Nice hot water, more very warm water and soap. See, we got all of that on there. So now I'm comfortable that we've got all of our holes filled. You can see that. So now I'm gonna go ahead and put the rest of this on here. I'm right-handed, so I don't do spatula with my left hand very well. I'm not ambidextrous enough for this poor camera girl here. And you can see it's already setting up and we're just gonna spread it evenly over the top. And then I'm gonna run this to the refrigerator for just a few minutes and let it finish setting up, get it nice and smooth. I have an offset knife here, kind of helps that. Or as someone famous says, spatula. <laughs> there. Because remember, your ganache is going to go over the top. And if you are familiar with Boston cream pies, you know that they're very smooth on the top. So we want our pudding to be smooth. Just imagine if at the last second you decide to have company, how quick this goes. It's really a nice, fast dessert. If you've got company coming, kids coming over after church, whatever, it's easy to get. I want to get all of this. We don't want to waste any of it. There we go. All right, I'm going to go stick this in the fridge. We'll be back to put the ganache on. All right, we're back here to finish up this delicious Boston cream pie cake. And we've got our ganache that we had made a few minutes ago. And it is down to room temperature. And we're just going to mix it up, make sure we don't have any lumps or anything going on because it's been sitting there. Get it nice and... There we go. And I had refrigerated the cake after we put the pudding on it for about a half hour. And so now I'm going to go ahead and put my ganache on top of the cake. I'm going to reserve a little bit in case there's an area that needs some. See this delicious. Ooh. If you don't know what a Boston cream pie is, you'll have to Google it. There's a hotel that is very famous for making Boston cream pie. I'm trying to keep the sides of my pan nice and neat, not messy. I'm just slowly putting that on. I don't want to get putting in my chocolate frosting like I almost did right there. Remember, we're putting this chocolate onto a cold refrigerator cake. Going very slowly, taking my time. This would be a really good project for one of your beginning cooks. And it doesn't matter if it's not perfect because it's going to still taste awesome. But this would be a really great project for a new beginning cook. Because it's all boxed. You don't have to have a lot of ingredients. I'm just trying to go slow. And then I'm going to smooth it all out. See? Not 
I'm going to leave that area alone right there for a minute. Let it set up a little bit. That's why I reserved a little bit of the ganache in my pan so I could go through and touch up areas where it might be thin without disrupting the appearance of my frosting. We got everything covered other than this little corner over the world over here. Get it all smoothed in here. Look it. And then you just go back and you refrigerate it for just a short while and it's time to serve. I'm just going to take my knife, go through and smooth all the areas. See how nice, get it nice and smooth. Now I'm going to go put this in the refrigerator and we're going to come back and we're going to have a bite. Okay, we're back and it is time to have a delicious piece of Boston cream pie. All right, I'm going to go ahead and cut a piece. Remember, it's got that pudding in there. And I did this pretty quick, so you're going to want to give it plenty of time in the refrigerator. I'm going to get a different spatula. If you let it set up a little longer than I did, you will be fine. So we come back, we can see all the where we put all the holes in. And as you've let it set, you can see all of the holes that are in there. And it's a moist cake, you can tell. Just mm. that is so good. And one thing about Boston cream pie, because see how thin the frosting is? It's not overly sweet. It's very refreshing for summer or winter, but it's really delicious. I hope you